Hi, and welcome back to my shop. If you'll recall back to the last episode, I focused on creating the curved shapes for the legs for my Live Edge Walnut Hall Table. And in this episode, I'm going to concentrate on creating another curved surface, but I'm going to use a completely different technique this time around. Now, for starters, I need to build the structure that will hold the legs in place. So I need to build my aprons. And one of my goals for this project was to have the front apron match the contour of the live edge of the walnut top. So I'll show you how I'm going to go about creating that curved apron for the front. Now, because this project I'm sort of building on the fly, there's no real model um, or uh, scale drawing that I'm working from. So I need to make sure that everything works visually with this, uh, this set of proportions. So what I've done is I've, I've double stick taped the legs onto the bottom of the tabletop. And then I have this piece of bending ply here that I've also taped between the legs and to the uh, bottom of the tabletop. And I've put a curve into this that matches the grain uh, on the, the curve for the tabletop. And then I can flip this over and make sure that this shape and this size works visually with the rest of the proportions of the table. So if I just turn my table over, I'll get my first real look at what it's going to look like. Now the reason that I put the table on the ground and not on my bench is that I want this thing to be at the vantage point that you would see it in a you know, household setting. If it's up on my bench, the proportions end up being a little bit off because I'm looking at it at an angle that I would never actually look at this table in real life. And the first thing I'm noticing is that, that the apron for this piece is currently set at five inches and it's got the angle cut to match the angle of the leg. I really like that. Um, but I'm thinking it may be a little bit too heavy for this table. I may want to cut another one of these at four inches and that might just work a little bit better because we do have a heavy top and these legs are pretty heavy. Um, so I don't necessarily want the apron to look too bulky, but I also want it to um, work well with the rest of the proportions. So I need to play around with that a little bit. I'm just taping on my new apron here, which is four inches in width. And I'm going to see if I like that better than the five inch apron. So here we've got a view now with the thinner four inch apron attached. And to my eye, this just looks better from a proportion standpoint. I think it, it just ties the elements of the table better together and it doesn't detract your attention from the walnut top. I think the, the wider apron kind of focused your attention. It's a little hard to tell because we have a different color material here. This will ultimately be cherry to match the legs. But I think I'm gonna go ahead with the four inch option here for the apron. So my next step is determining just the right curve to put on that to match the profile of the tabletop. Once again, I'm going to use a thin strip of wood to help me set the right curve for this profile. So I've cut this piece, it's a thin piece of white oak, and I've cut it so that at the exact length it is, it sort of forces the right curvature to match the grain on this piece, if I can get the ends to stay put. So that's a good way for me to sort of determine the right, uh, the right curve to use. And then to transfer that curve, I also have a piece of MDF here that I'm gonna use as my template. And I'm just gonna flush it up with the front of each leg. And then once again, put my strip so that I have an eighth of an inch reveal on each end and then I can scribe that with my pencil and that will give me my curve. And once again I'll use a combination of my bandsaw and then my spindle sander 
to build and clean up my template. I mentioned in the intro to this episode that I was going to be using a different technique to actually create the curved surface for my front apron. Now if you recall back to a writing desk project that I did a few years back, I used a technique called bent lamination where I took thin strips of walnut and bent them over a form and glued them together and then essentially those glued strips will retain the shape of the form that they're bent over. And that worked great for the drawer fronts for that particular project. But for this apron, I need to be able to mortise and tenon the ends of that apron into the legs. And having thin strips of bent lamination and trying to cut tenons into that or mortises for a floating tenon just isn't gonna work. Anytime you start severing those glue lines, you weaken the piece of material. So for this apron, I'm actually gonna use a different technique that's called stack lamination. Stack lamination, simply put, is taking multiple pieces, gluing them together to form a bigger piece that you can then use as a substrate. So in my case, I'm gonna be using some maple that I had kicking around the shop, and I will stack pieces of maple one on top of the other until I get a four inch tall strip that's wide enough for me to cut that curve into the front of it. Um, there are a number of different ways you can sort of lay bricks so to speak, so you have smaller overlapping pieces. In my case, I have a board that's big enough that I can just cut wide strips and then stack them one on top of the other to make up my substrate. And then at the end, once I have that shape all cut out, then what I'll do is put a veneer of cherry on top of that. So even though the substrate or the, the most of the material behind the scenes will be maple, that very last layer will be uh, a veneer of cherry and it'll match the rest of the, uh, the carcass for the, the table. I got really fortunate in that I have a piece of maple sitting around that's left over from a prior project and it's already milled to exactly an inch thick. So all you need to do is be able to source four pieces like this out of this board and then I can just stack them one on top of another to get to my four inches. Now that I have all of my pieces rough cut out, I can stack them one on top of one another and glue them together. And I've just made some lines along the back edge so I know exactly where each piece needs to glue relative to the, uh, the pieces adjacent to it. I've got the stack lamination out of the clamps now, and I just need to even up the bottom where each of the laminations meets because I want to have that nice and square, and then that will let me go to the bandsaw and I can actually cut out the profile. <laughs> 
Now I'm going to come back to the spindle sander one more time and just clean up the bandsawed edge. The only challenge I face here is that my spindle sander really only goes about three and three quarters of an inch tall and this is a four inch tall piece. So I'm going to have to do most of the work on one side and then flip it over and make sure that uh, you know I fare the sanded edge from the top to the bottom. But that should give me a nice smooth surface and then I can finish it up with some hand sanding.